Welcome to an episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, 1962 Chevrolet Bel Air. This is the bubble top. I, I like these early 60s Chevys. You know, we, people focus so much on the 55, 56, 57, and then they kind of jump to the, you know, later Camaros and whatnot. I, I, I always thought these were a nice, clean, interesting design, especially the ones that were the 409. This one has been extensively modified, but beautifully done. Ralph Hogeen is the uh, owner of this car. He owns RMD Garage. You guys are on Velocity. Yeah, I watch that's your right, show. Jay. Thank you. So Thanks you for having us. you got a big TV star here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Very I don't cool. know about that. Very cool. Now, this is your personal car, right? Yeah, this is my baby. Customer. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's going to have a little extra love and care. It's, it's got yeah. an emotional tie to it. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I like to build my cars around my girls, so, and this is Nadia's. Okay. And it took kind of a little bit longer. She, she grew up, and she's like, what's happening, Dad? Aren't you building my car? <laughs> So it was, a, it was worth the wait. Now, you've been a car guy since day one, right? You, you started, what, as a kid in high school? Yeah, I started detailing? washing cars. I dropped out of high school, and I started washing cars. But I grew up in the lowrider scene. So right. um, when I set out to build some stuff, I wanted to kind of break through that and right. build some stuff that was really going to be different and, and, and set us apart. Okay, so let's see what we have here. This, of course, was what they call the bubble top, which I think is a really clean design. And you've actually cleaned it up quite a bit. All the chrome's gone. Right. You've done it in sort of, I, I would say it looks like pewter, but that's not the right word. The bubble top is such a beautiful, iconic car. Remember, there was only uh, 5,000 ever made. Right. Uh, there was, and it was because the 61 had a bunch of tops left over. Right. So they used that, and then I'll, and like you said, they put the 409 in only a few of them. So I've been a fan of bubble tops since the 61 and 62. So the chance, the chance to get my hands on one of these was something that I really wanted to and do. And didn't Pontiac build a bubble top version too, I think right? there was, yeah, there was definitely yeah. a lot of attempts to build kind of the car that was going to look a little different because, you know, uh, as, you, as you remember, 63 and 64, they changed the entire body right, style. Right. And, and they're really, you could really see them on the street and you could, know, you could tell them apart very quickly. But, you know, the real difference is the execution. I mean done wrong it just looks horrible yes but done right and this is really clean I mean I can still see the 62 Chevy just sort of cleaned up you know shower shave haircut yeah, yeah. you know exactly yeah, it, yeah 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 it, it looks it, it really looks it really looks terrific the interior is really impressive I have to admit those are the most inviting seats I've ever seen <laughs> you know usually I get they put the racing bucket with yeah. the buttock squeezing you know yeah okay guys this is really fun come on you know, whereas this looks like something i want to drive I, I like that i think you're a little taller than me but we'll, we'll we'll make it work but yeah the design for the interior i mean we know that this car has beautiful body lines so i wanted to tie it in and almost have it like it was moving so when i started to work with my upholstery guys all in house we'll say sanchez and juan it was really kind of and they were like come on rob you're crazy we're not yeah because everything had to be contour everything had to be handmade and then you had to make sure that it look good and fit and fit and finish so it kind of streamlined the car so everything from the glass all the way through you could really see it come to life so tell me what we started with here a wrecked car really nice original car six cylinder what was it originally? well I have that internet story I bought the car in Chicago sight unseen mm -hmm. I sent a couple friends to go look at it they said it looked great we got back to the shop I was excited it was red it was beautiful took it to Sam Blast and it was all covered in fiberglass yeah yeah so I, it kind of depressed me a little bit, to be honest. That's why I shelved it. Yeah. I started to work on it a little bit, hit bits in here, but. How I, long a time period? What are you talking? A couple of years? A few months? What? Yeah, I think it was. I mean, if you if you look at when we first kind of scratched, you know, kind of took it down, I'd say it was a few years. But once we start to get going, I mean, it was about a six month build. Yeah. Oh, so okay. it was pretty wild, but. That's pretty quick. We had a really good direction. Let me ask you about the build. See, because my brother was a model maker. He could, and he had such patience. To me, I would get the thing and then paint it, and then I want to put it together, and then it'd be a thumbprint, you know, from like the paint is yeah, still wet while yeah. I'm trying to glue it together. Yeah. It just looked awful. Do you sketch all this out on paper? Do you, you know, that kind of thing, you know, check it twice, cut once, you know, that kind of, or do you just sort of get going and then the idea flows as you're doing it? Was this your vision from the very beginning? I, These seats, that dash, you know. So we took it down to bare metal, Jay, and then then what, the good thing is we waited because had we built it then, I think it would have been a whole different car and the, the trend was different and I wanted to do something that was so unique, bottom line. So when I started to push the envelope on the design, of, of course things come to you and then you kind of start going, once you, and you've, you've probably done it before, you kind of start that creative process 
And you know, I always say chaos creates results, right? So because you're so chaotic, there's so much going on, but at the end of the day, you're kind of really going through some motions and that right. creates what you're doing. So until you evoke that emotion, that's what really what happened and it started to come to life. So, but the interior, the, the, the grill, really, really focal point for us yeah. to do. And then what lines, you know, do we keep the chrome? Do we do the trim? Do we not do that? And the scheme, the paint scheme, we needed to make it timeless. Now you said you grew out of the lowrider culture. Was there any temptation to do a lowrider version of this? Did your friends go, what do you think? <laughs> you Never to the 62, but on yeah. the 61, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's still part of my culture. Yeah. Some of my friends have some of the baddest lowriders you're ever going to oh, see. Oh, we had some incredible oh, ones yeah. here. And uh, to me, the, the, the detail work in the paint, is, there, it's mind-boggling. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know how they absolutely. do it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm studying a door for the, half an the, hour. They're and I'm seeing so some, methodical. Yeah, yeah. They're so thought out. The time invested in them, you know, you got to, these, these are artists. I mean, the guys are putting, yeah. and the best part about it is some of these guys are doing it in their in their home. They're not even doing it in garages. Yeah. They're yeah. doing it, in, I know, I know. it which is, which is mind blowing when you yeah. think about it, but it, that's their love. And I, I love that affinity that they have. Let's take a look at the grill that we were just talking about. With this, Jay, we had to change it up. So the whole thing with the grill, yeah. there was a lot of trial and error to go to this. And I kept on walking back to the fabricators and that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So there is actually a, a bunch of grills that we threw away. The vision had to stay, and to me, was in motion. Everything is in motion. And I yeah. think that's when I look around here, there's so many cars that have that movement, and that's what I love the most, the Bugattis, the Rolls, right. that they just really flow from front to back. So it was creating all this, and, and Christian really did a great job at executing this. David did a great job at executing this. And I think it's a combination of my guys really understanding that creative right. process to get it to kind of flow. And that's what I love about building cars, that my guys, uh, they're really, the, they get all the credit to build them because our design, you know, our design, it's crazy ideas and they got to bring them to life. And then they actually execute it and they fall in love. And that's what's beautiful. Now, is this the original bumper just? Yep, this is the original okay. bumper notched in, all cut back, added this diffuser, added this little lip right here that right. you see here. So you still have a lot of the original. We still have the original light housing, but right. it's not going to work. You have to modify all of it, add aluminum to this, add a yeah. bunch of aluminum to make sure that all the gaps in the fit and finish look good. Let's open the hood. Let's see yeah. what we got under here. So we did these hinges, which is Very really nice. different. And again, I wanted to just kind of make it different. So. And it's called Sanity. See, I thought you would have called it lipstick or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's so red. It's so red. You know what? Yeah. It, it, was, it was insane, and it was an insane build. And then at the end, we noticed how it brought us all together, so we named it Sanity. So, so what motor do we have here? We have an LS3 pushing okay. 555 horsepower. You got all the regular stuff, and then we wanted just to make it stealth, just a little bit of But it's stealth. not crazy. It's a street car you can drive. It's a street car. It's a touring yeah. car. It's ready right. to go. And that's what we wanted to do is make a, a show car that's ready to go and hit the road. And what does each one do? This is, is this radiator? Yeah, so you got all your radiators, all your fillers, everything ready to go. Right. Just, you know, unscrew them and, and drop your fluids in. Okay. So, is so. it heavier than it was originally? I think, yeah, oh yeah, you got, an, you got an Art Morrison chassis in here. Okay. Uh, so you've modified, you've taken a lot of stuff out, but you've added a lot of things to just make it even stronger. So okay. that sport chassis really gives you uh, what you need to be responsive, but you've added some weight. Very good, so. very good. How does this shut, just put it Just like that, yep. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Oh, oh those are nice. A little different, way. a little different, you know? Is that the stock windshield? No, no, no. So this obviously is fully custom front and back. Mm -hmm. And the guys at AM Hot Rod Glass, I mean, Carmen just has to go and do an amazing job at remolding the actual front window to make it very seamless. But not only that, you get to order it smoked, scratch resistant. And what it does is eliminates your entire trim. And it yeah. really gives you that 21st century look of a car. So I, I've always wanted you to know, do it's, that. It's funny, that's one area where most guys just kind of zone out. Uh, you know, I've got my old Mazda Cosmo over there. Yeah. There, there weren't very many in the United States. And I, went to, I can't remember the windshield company. And they just made me new glass, and it was perfect. But nobody ever thinks of making glass. Right. You, you always wind up with the same old scratch you know, sandblasted. Yeah, you see, the new, you see the yeah. car, the paint looks good, and then yeah. you see a couple of uh, the glass that's got right. the, the old scratches from going down or up. So, I mean, I, I think for me, 
was again a really cool modern piece that gave you. So when you're standing way back, you get that smoke finish just really enhances this car. And whose red is this? This is BASF's red. Okay. They're our sponsor as well as the gray, okay. and we wanted to make sure. I mean, their their product is amazing, and the guys yeah, they, have done a great job at cutting it and making sure that it absolutely looks brilliant, but their clear coats paint, are second to especially none. especially in California, is so difficult now. Yeah. You know, with yeah. all the environmental... They're having to shoot the water. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the idea of I'll paint any car for twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> that's... You remember those? Yeah, those guys? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I two mean, ninety nine. Yeah, I mean, paint is what? 400 bucks a gallon at least? Yeah, like yeah, if, 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 e like e easily, about 699 yeah. if you're getting, you know, oh, okay. so that, yeah. Okay. So it, it depends, again, what you're buying. But yeah, I remember the day, um, I think I was uh, one of those guys, I won't name them, that we, you know, I was detailing and they brought their car, old, beautiful 49. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, uh, how long did you paint it? Uh, oh, we just painted it about two weeks ago. It's dried already, it's cured. Start cutting it, buffing it. Uh, they had painted it two days before. So that thing expanded. I called the guy, I go, you lied, you paid it two, two, two days ago and the car, it cannot polish. You gotta reshoot it again. Oh wow. So they had to cut it and reshoot it again, but again, that's, that's yeah. what cheap paints does to you, so. So tell me about these wheels. So obviously the Fitment, this is race line wheel. Nice looking and, wheel. And yeah, it's a great wheel, it's a great, they're, they're also a great partner and they've been able to really work with us on the design. So I'll, I'll start working with them early off and tell them what I'm building and really start to kind of look at all their wheels and or if they have something shelved or if they have something in concept that they haven't come up with. And then pretty much I fell in love with this wheel. I knew that it was gonna look really good. And then we start to work on the tones. Yeah, and now then, did you, was this originally a chrome wheel or aluminum wheel and you painted yeah, it's a it? Ford, it's a Ford's wheel. A Ford's, so okay. you would have seen it raw aluminum or right, smooth right. aluminum. And then actually they powder coated it for us once we shared the paint scheme and then the red and all that. So it actually does um, a really great job and then make sure the stands fits perfect. Now the roof is the original height. That hasn't been cut, right? That hasn't been cut. Okay. You got the original roof. You got all your glass. All your glass is smoked as well, your sides. So you got right. power windows, uh, power door locks. Uh, cool thing on this car is we installed the Viper system, which was, allows you to turn it on from wherever you are, okay. which is really cool because I took the keys that, uh, by accident from SEMA and I was on the plane and I turned it on for Joe because he'd said, dude, I think you have the keys. So I look in my backpack and I'm like, <laughs> So stand by, Joe, and I go to my app and I turn on the car for him. So okay, everybody, from a plane. yeah, from a plane, everybody's standing by at SEMA waiting for this car to get out. Um, and all of a sudden, Joe goes, "Hold on, guys, he's doing something," and the car fires up. So it was really cool, and I'm yeah. glad we had added it. So it was one of those things. Yeah, it's nice to know somebody can steal your car from <laughs> like a hundred miles away. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. It's good to know yeah, that. Yeah, it's good that to know that. I can okay. move the car without without All them right, being there. I mean, there's so many subtle touches on this car. Tell me about okay, the steering wheel is uh, obviously something else. The you steering wheel, yep, but it came off a Corvette. Oh, it's a Corvette yeah, wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still got. We left the paddle shifters. If anybody ever wants to add them, okay. we eliminated a lot of the switches, and then we added obviously the sanity name, and then wrapped it in the leather. Now, leather. see, normally I like to see the original dash because it it, it kind of reminds me that I'm a sixty. That's 1962, whatever year I'm doing. But I like what you've done here. It's nice and clean. Yeah, we wanted to do, again, um, we wanted all the design to carry throughout, Jay. And, and trust me, when we shot this for the show, I had done a different dash and I hated it. Yeah. I just, I gotta be honest, sometimes you don't, you know, as a creative guy, sometimes you think that's gonna look good and you gotta be honest with yourself right, and say, right. it looked like crap. I, I had them pull that. And then the guys that Classic Instruments had this made for us and it just fit perfectly. That gray, the dials, when oh, it turns right on. Uh, you know, it's not ergonomically perfect, that right. meaning not the dash itself, but I'm saying the way it's laid out, maybe a little bit angle would have yeah. been better when you're driving, but you're building a custom car. Right. You know, you're the, at the end of the day, it's fully custom. Was there any temptation to put a manual box in it? Yeah, we ended up, yeah. We, we always uh, play with that. So our truck, our 1958 that we built, yeah. manual box, and it is a beast. It is actually a beast. Yeah, but this one, we said, oh, you know what? Let's let somebody enjoy it. We imagined a couple driving in it right. and just having a great time. Whose shifter to shows. is that? Um, that shifter, I believe, is uh, Le Car. Okay. I be, yeah, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it's Lacar. So, but it's not, it's not factory GM or anything. No, 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 no. I, no. Th I mean, I've seen it somewhere, but I, I not on a production. Yeah, and then you could see I color matched everything. So yes. you would have normally seen that chrome, and you would have seen the dial in a billet uh, style, and I changed that up. Same thing with the cup holders, everything. Eddie Motorsports changed them up, 
and then um, painted them to match the car. All right, let's move to the back. I love the fact you've kept the original fuel. Everybody filler gave me crap about that, Jay. About keeping it? Yeah. No, I love it. I we, love it. I mean, I like something that harkens back. I like to see what it was. You exactly. Know? Like, I, I looked at this right at, I went 61 or 62 shaft. I knew right away. I love the fact that the roofs and chops, I'm not driving exactly. like it, you know? Exactly. I mean, I like the fact that it's, it's extreme practical, yeah. I would call the it. Yeah, the line, exactly. Yeah. The line, well, the way it, it, I wanted to see this car 20 years from now and have somebody say, damn, that thing looks beautiful. Yeah. And what is it, right? They're gonna wonder what it is. Once they recognize it, they're gonna recognize the bubble and all that. And then, obviously, the affinity, don't change some of the iconic things that I right. think made this car. I love the fact is. you kept the Bel Air script. Oh, yeah. And, and there was a lot of back and forth. Do we yeah. do that? And I go, no, those have to be on there. Yeah, so. it, it just goes back to the roots of the car. Let's come around to the back. Oh, look at that. What do you think of that? Nice and clean. I like the fact that you've kept, for those that are familiar with these cars, the Bel Air was the lower price that was below the Impala. Impala was sort of the top of the line. Yeah. And the Impala had three tail lights, and the Bel Air had two. And I like the fact that it's it's it stayed a Bel Air, you know. Especially the Super Sports. I mean, those yeah. got those got up way high. I like how you integrated the exhaust system in here. Yeah. So here we actually tucked the bumper all the way in. We flush mounted it, and then we shaved. We probably took about an inch and a half off, and then added that trim right there to give it that really cool railing. We also added all these little pieces that you you would unless you really have two of them standing next to each other. Yeah. So as you can see, even the lights we changed out. I love that you referenced the two lights on each side, but these we wanted to sync them in, bring in the right. LED, modernize them a little bit. So these are off actually a Chrysler product, and they look really good how we pocket them in, and when you light them up, they just absolutely look amazing. Again, do you, did you all do, do this all on paper first, or did you just start working? No, I think we started working on some of this. I think that we kind of had a vision of where, what direction, right. you know, and, and, and my guys are probably would say, what do you mean we started working? You know, right, right, <laughs> they're yeah. gonna say, that, yeah, they're absolutely right. They started working on it and back and forth. That's looking good. That's not looking good. Hey, what's happening here? This is not right. I don't really like that line. And then making those adjustments from the creative process. And then, but from the very beginning, I drew out the exhaust, the tail, exactly how I wanted it. Right. And then you trial the narrow of the lights. I originally wanted a big modern light coming in like that and then going back. No, I'll tell I you like what, this. I'll tell you what, that, I'm glad I didn't do it. It was really expensive to make a mold, and I, at the end, the results just look great. But no. look at the inside, the inside. The so tailor. everything's about detail. So for me, everything's about making sure that we have the attention to detail, not just on the upper, but all throughout. Wow. Now that looks like a back seat. It looks like two kids that sit there looking backwards. Like, exactly, like right? The old wagon. movie theaters. I yeah, want to yeah. go to the drive-in and, and sit here and look at the drive-in. I think those were the best days. You know, hide a couple of kids in the drive-in. See, no matter yeah, how much money exactly. you make, you're still trying to sneak in I still in the trying to sneak in kids. Yeah, yeah, well, so yeah, I think uh, no matter how much money we make, <laughs> we still have to be a little tight. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what gives us a little bit more money. Yeah. So. But yeah, we uh, hit all the components, added them all here. You got your battery, you got your kicker audio system, everything hidden, and then obviously just making it nice and clean and that it flows. Same thing on top. I'm a big stickler of detail. Right. Focus on those other things that people aren't going to see or recognize, but they're going to make you happy when you see them all done. Yeah, no, that's what's fun when you, you know, you just sort of get a chair and a, a beer or a glass of wine, whatever you want, and just sit and look at it and you see all these sort of little details which are nicely done. The hinges are finished. It's beautiful. And we can close the trunk. Awesome. Now what are those? 22 inch wheels? Yeah, we got big wheels in the back. Well we wanted it to be really beefy. So we added that Toyo tire which gave the, gave us that meat that we wanted, obviously with such a big wheel. I hate it when it stretches them and then it makes it look really weird. I like the big face. Yeah, yeah. So because normally I don't like the big giant dubs on the older yeah, cars because yeah. it, the wheel is like in your face and it's distracting. But the fact that you've muted it with the gray, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't draw your eye in as much. Yeah, as I, a little bit understated, and it's yeah. got the meat that it needs, and and that's kind of like I'd say if, if you were to say, well, what 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 is it that this car is flashy and also stealth? Let's bring it next door. We'll put it up on our sterile county lifts, and you'll see uh, you see what the underside looks oh, like. Oh wow, that's that. I love that. You're gonna love it. I think underneath, there's a lot of attention to detail, and it should be shown. So thank you. Yeah. Let's do it. Mr. <laughs> great, aren't they? Your lift is amazing. 
You can bring it to the car. Yeah. You know, you don't have to bring the car to the lift. I, I, a lot of times your lift is blocked, you got something in front of it. That is so yeah. crazy. So each one of them talks to each other, they balances, each other out, balances out, and then sends a signal to start picking up. All the way up. I'm always astounded at how small oil filters yeah. are for, for you modern this, cars. You got this you know, huge engine. Because the old cars use this big, giant <laughs> filter. Well, that's going to filter out a lot of, you know, it's just so tiny. It's, well, everything obviously powder coated. This is all ceramic coating. I love these accordion joints, yeah. these flex. Yeah, the flex, uh, obviously they allow that movement. So yeah. you can see a little bit of the ceramic kind of changing color, but we ran them throughout. And, and with this Art Morrison chassis, so one of the things we had to do is create a little tunnel, which kind of, they spec it out for you. So with the 62, uh, it doesn't just fit right in. You gotta kind of make sure that right. you do some adjustments. So Some assembly required. Some assembly required, yeah, that's for yeah. sure. Just the fact you have to polish and detail the underside of the car. <laughs> Bad enough you spend all the time on the top of the car. L luckily I'm a detailer, right? Yeah, and what are these? Just just, just air vents? Yeah, the these are just uh, essentially uh, aesthetic looking. I wanted to, the belly pan, when you look underneath these cars, I remember seeing a 61 years ago at the Grand National Roaster Show up on the side, and I fell in love with yeah. just the detail that it did in the metalwork. So, well, you know what it is? I like them because with so many of the older cars, I don't run the belly pans because mm -hmm. you get oil and gas in there. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it stays, it forms a puddle, yeah. and then if you have a fire, right. you're driving a, a Molotov cocktail. Yeah, you're, you know, yeah. this, this will allow any fluids or anything. Anything to escape, yeah, essentially, yeah. moisture or anything. Yeah, so we wanted yeah. to add the mesh in, in there and then kind of just carry it throughout. You see, you see again, you got your um, four-link suspension, everything right. all done. You got, remember I talked about the gas tank, we swapped No, out. you didn't tell us about the gas tank. So you we, and I talked about it. Tell us what we have We took here. out the this original is, this spare. This is not the Chevy, yeah. Okay. Right, we, are, we took out the original spare tank, I'm sorry, the original spare um, housing right. to add this beautiful tank, um, okay. which is gonna give us what we need. You got a huge engine, you're, you're pulling obviously a, a bunch of fuel, you wanna make sure your 20 gallon tank, all aluminum kind of helps you with that, so. Okay, and your obviously exhaust system nice and clear. Yeah, we yeah. have a great partnership with Borla. Borla uh, took care of us. We ran the exhaust all the way through the chassis, and then we were able to kind of put the mufflers right at the back end, and then run them right through that that uh, back bumper like we talked about. Yeah, so. and, and your suspension all adjustable here as well. Yeah, yeah, we got the coilover suspension all adjustable. So again, it sits low right now, but it could sit at a at a regular right height, or however you want it, depending on what. Now, what are you running back here? 354 or something like that? We're running a 373 gear ratio. Oh, so that gives yeah. you a little extra power. So you got a four-speed transmission with overdrive. Right. So a 373 gives you a nice balance, plenty of performance and, and mileage as well. Yeah, I mean, it's... You could eat off of it. It looks like you did eat off of it, actually. <laughs> we had some tacos. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's probably, you, you know, you Wait. can't take the boy out of whatever it is. You can't take me out of the hood. That's right, you can't that's take him out sure. of the hood. Very good. Well, this this is the cleanest hood I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, yeah not, not a bad hood to be in, right? No, it's really. Ah, thank you, man. That means a lot. Trust me. Uh, you know, it's amazing how many people don't want their car up on a lift, you know, because it just, no, no, I don't want to show that. Whereas this, it's it's pretty much. I, I want them to see that it's a true build. I want them to yeah. know that there was a lot of thought that and went And it's your own it. car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, and it needed to be right. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, you know, I always tell people we're building cars on TV, not for TV. That's right. right. And, so and this that, is yours. You're not yeah. building some stupid ex-talk show host, you know. <laughs> Are you, are you telling me that we're going to be building a car for you? I don't know. We'll I see don't know. I, I like your work, my I friend. I saw 800 guys here. I don't think, I think they'll boot me out. No, it's really good. And I, I, I just love these flex joints. Yeah. I use these in my steam cars, you know, yeah. because in the old days, they didn't have it. And the, it would crack. And this, it, it accordions in and out. Yeah, and then you could see we added, obviously, all the clamps in between, just in case something cracked along the way or we, we had damaged one. We're not, we don't have to change out the entire exhaust. So. And everything here is nicely protected as well. Yeah. Well, this is, this is clean underneath as anything I've ever seen, which is good and bad. Yeah. The good is it's incredibly clean under, thing, under here. The bad thing is, you know, I know if you've watched the news lately, we've had these horrible mudslides all around here, and the roads are just covered with rocks and dirt. And this is going to Barrett-Jackson, right? That's right, yeah. It's going to Barrett-Jackson to the auction. And uh, I don't want to spend all day cleaning up. So this <laughs> is the one car we won't take for a ride. But next time you're down, we'll take it for a ride. Let's do it. That okay. sounds good. Okay. Love it. It's just we can't get on the roads anyway. You know, two, 
Months ago, we couldn't drive because of the fire. Now we can't drive because of the flood. This is, it's biblical living here, okay? But uh, you'll come back and we'll do some more. I appreciate more. your kindness, right. Jay. Right. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Because we would have beat this up. Oh, yeah, and thanks the whole team. Thank, thank the whole you, team thank you. Home. Thank you, guys. See you guys next week. See ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs>